In the first movie, I showed how to use the AGH Synth V-Scale to precisely tweak the intonation of the oscillator in my Moog Mother 32. As you can see here from the tuner display on my Mordax Data, it's pretty consistent across multiple octaves. I'm at the very extreme of what the Mordax can tune to there. As you can see, and the intonation stays very good across this entire several octave range. Well, let's use the V-Scale to improve the tuning of something that's a little bit trickier, a filter. Many filters can be put into oscillation by turning the resonance control all the way up. This turns them into a sine wave oscillator. However, filters don't always have as good of intonation as oscillators do, so they might need a little bit more work to make them track the keyboard. As before, I'm going to use a reference oscillator, always tuned to middle C. Take the sine wave out of this for now just to show you. And I'm going to tune the filter by listening to this at the same time. So I'm going to change to my oscilloscope display so you can see and hear what's going on. Go into input number two. There's my sine wave. Take the output. And I need to mix together this reference oscillator with my filter's output. I could use a couple channels in my levitate, but I'm going to take advantage of the mixer built into the Mother 32. So I'll go to mix input one there. Take the mixer's output. Go to my external audio input, turn the mix to external audio, and make sure my VC mix is set to the mix one input right now. So there's my sine wave. Now let's take this filter, connect a control voltage to it. In this case, I'm going to use output three from my V scale. I'm going to keep two always tuned to what my Moog requires. Take that into the CV1 input on my filter. Now some filters will have inputs labeled as one volt per octave. Some will merely have a voltage input that does not have an attenuator on it. If you find an input without an attenuator, that's the one you should be using for one volt per octave. If you don't find a dedicated frequency control voltage input, quite often you need to turn the attenuator up all the way to get one volt per octave tracking. So there's my input. I'm going to grab one of the outputs of my filter for now, plug it into input one, and run a copy of that into the other input on the Moog's mixer. Now switch it on so you can always hear it droning. Move over to input two. Nothing's happening right now because I do not have resonance turned up on my filter. Let's go ahead and crank that up till we go into self-oscillation. That green waveform is the sine wave produced by my filter in oscillation. It's not that loud. I can try other outputs to see if any of them are better. Well, that one's the loudest so far. I think I'll use that one for reference because it's going to be easier to hear mixed in with my reference oscillator. I'm going to play middle C on my keyboard and adjust the frequency of the filter to get as tightly tuned as I can to my reference oscillator. This is going to be touchy because filters rarely have fine tune controls. They just have one wide range control. They're not normally meant to be standalone oscillators. That's pretty darn close. Okay, let's try one octave up. Way out of tune. This is where I get my little screwdriver or trim pot tool. Go over to my V scale and say, let's start tweaking that in. You see, it's a very precise adjustment. I take multiple turns just to get that couple cents of detune out of it. Okay, that's very good. Let's go back to this middle C. Very close. Just a little bit out down there. Let's tweak the filter's cutoff, which is its oscillator frequency in this case. Get it back in tune again. Go up one octave. And make another fine adjustment. And this is quite an iterative adjustment where you need to keep going back to your reference pitch and then readjust at a higher pitch. There we go. Right around. There we get no drift and we hear no beating. Pretty darn good. A little bit of drift there. Now let's try a higher octave. A little bit of drift there. Let's go ahead and bring that in, but I'm already pretty darn close.
That's really good intonation and tracking for a filter like this. Quite often when you use the filter as an oscillator, you might get good intonation for only, say, an octave or two, unless it's particularly well designed where you spend a lot of time trimming it up. But using something like the V-Scale makes it pretty darn simple to make filters very usable as trackable oscillators as well.